Good morning, everyone. Just wait for some people to join us. Oh, we've got a few people. Who are those people? <coughs> it's so slow. Here we go. We've got Hayley, Lisa. <coughs> Hi ladies, can one of you just comment, make sure everything's up and running okay? Joanne, Sarah, Megan. Can you see us, hear us? <coughs> Amy, all these people are joining, but I'm so sorry guys if you've commented already. <laughs> you've probably noticed Sam when watching these that it's such a delay when I'm saying uh, something. Yeah. So people, it really is. Yeah. So I am sorry if you've already commented. Oh, we've got a comment. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so good morning. Today we've got Sam Mollock from Bambino Bells with Sam. She's going to be talking to you about baby development, so teething and weaning. Um, you might not be at this stage yet because I know a lot of you are still pregnant or have very small babies, um, but this time will come and it's good to start thinking about it now, prepping now, because all of a sudden it will be there and you'll be panicking, thinking, oh, what do I do? So it might be worth watching this class um, and then re-watching it at a later date when that time does come. Um, so it's just a bit of prep for you so you know what to expect. But yeah, I'll leave it to you, Sam. Um, anyone got any questions, then please pop them below and I'll ask during the class. But over to you. Hi, so I'm Sam Mallard and I'm the owner of Bambino Bells, like Jade has just said. And I'm just here to talk to you today about teething and weaning so we're just going to go through um all the basic bits and if there is anything that is on your mind at that point while i'm saying something please do interject and um ask a question and then jade will obviously ask the question to me as i can't see the comments and if at a later point you do um think of something then please feel free to comment or message or go through jade or this group is of course going to be open for some time um, so if you have anything at all that you want to discuss, then feel free to. Okay. Um, now, um, something important to say is I'm not a health visitor, but I have been on um, many courses, which has given me a qualification to be able to give advice and guidance on teething and weaning. Okay. Um, so we'll just get straight to it. One of the really important things to remember is um, with teething is um, baby's first tooth come at any point. So some babies are actually born with a tooth or two teeth and some babies are not and will have teeth uh, much later on. So usually within the first year of life, they will have at some point some teeth. If by the time they get to one and they haven't usually got a tooth, then you would just ring up your dentist and book an appointment with your dentist and then we'll just go through things. But usually there's nothing to worry about until kind of 14 months onwards. So it's not uncommon for children to not have any teeth right up until 13 or 14 months, okay? So don't worry at all. So we'll just go through all of those bits. So when you're starting weaning, the age that is recommended for weaning is six months, um, sorry, teething is three to four months is usually when they start getting um, kind of pains where they might start dribbling, their gums might be a little bit red, their behavior might alter a little bit, they may be a little bit more clingy. If you're breastfeeding, they may require more feeds because it may be um, that they are just needing that comfort from you. So you may notice that sometimes their cheeks are in a little bit pink, a little bit blotchy, uh, kind of a more almost a red tinge. Uh, their gums can appear a bit sore, kind of dark red. And if the tooth is starting to come through, you'll notice little white spots. And you can usually feel those by rubbing a clean finger on their gums and you can feel them. Usually around three, four months is when things start to move quite a lot. So you'll get the teething symptoms, which are what I've just discussed as well. But sometimes they do rub their ear quite a lot. And that's just basically the pain in their mouth. They're not quite sure exactly where the pain is. Um, other things like dribbling or drooling. 
is a quite common one. And this is essentially because they are producing excess saliva, which usually numbs the gums. So when they're producing excess saliva, it's perfectly fine, perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. And you just make sure that they've got a bib on so that you're keeping that area clean and just change the bib on a regular basis and just wipe it clean with cotton wool and water so that they don't get sore bits there really. With the drooling often comes nappies that are quite interesting. So their poos can sometimes be a little bit green, a little bit mucusy, and that's just basically due to the excess saliva. If of course that kind of carries on for a little while then do definitely get to speak to your doctor or your health visitor but usually it's perfectly normal so things like that are um quite common in regards to how to help um teething pains there's quite a lot out there so there'll be things such as the teething rings which you can get hold of um, there was a lady that was on recently with Jade. Is it Carrie Kaya? Kia? Kia, yeah. yeah. She has quite a lot of things on her site in regards to uh, teething rings. So feel free to have a look on there too. Um, you can get so many different things for teething rings. My only advice is buy from um, a British website because then you know that it the product is it's BPA free it has been tested it's got no nasties in there for your baby um, and it's you know um, free from being a choking hazard so there's not going to be any parts that are going to come off or anything like that so teething rings are fantastic and it's a bit of a minefield out there with it because there are just so many different types of teething rings so ones that we found really useful are the ones that almost look like a little dummy my daughter didn't have a dummy but they had a little dummy and on one side they had kind of like little silicon um spikes on it which were very soft so they just helped massage the gum when they chewed on it so that was a really good one you can also get ones that are kind of soft filled with a liquid uh which again is perfectly safe when you pop them in the fridge and they just keep the gums nice and cool. So for the daytime, teethers are just a little bit of a lifesaver, but also they just help to keep baby being distracted while you're doing different activities and all sorts of things. So teethers are definitely something that I would recommend. Also, um, if your baby is chewing, oh, sorry, I've <laughs> just done that. I'm trying to move the phone. Okay. Chewing. Um, quite a lot on um, their beard or their thumb or their finger is often a sign that they are teething. So, um, you know, watch out for those as well. You can often tell because they do start to kind of get little red cheeks. And then there's obviously things at that point that you can buy to kind of help babies. So whether it's um, teething or whether it's popping open, um large chunks of carrots so if you get a carrot quite a large one and cut it in um so you've got three quarters of it left cut that in four and then stick the batons in the fridge you can give those to your baby make sure that you are there constantly you're not obviously uh, leaving your baby on the tent while they've got that in mouth but they're chewing on it bits of carrots are not going to put up so it's a great thing to do um with those bits with the teething gels and teething liquids, there is so many different things out there. And um, it's finding something that works for you. Same as, as adults with pain relief, it's of course finding something that works for us. So with little ones, it's exactly the same. There is lots and lots of different things out there. We've probably tried most things. My daughter was probably teething from around three months um is when i started noticing you know like the signs where she literally had all the symptoms of um chewing red cheek rippling runny nose kind of funny interesting nappies and her first tooth didn't arrive until eight months um so we tried quite a lot of different things there is um 
you can get teething gels, you can get powders, and you can get granules, and you can get liquids. So it is finding something that suits you. You can get different types of bond gelers. You can get one that is literally just to make the gums cooler, and you can get one that helps to numb the gums that has aniseed in there. Those are, of course, medicated. Um, you can also get Ashton and Parsons granules, which is kind of like the powder, but it's really important that whatever you get, you read the instructions thoroughly because of course, um, they are all different because they are made by different pharmaceutical brands. So definitely have a look. For an example, the Anversol we used to get is a little glass jar and it's yellow liquid and we used to call it liquid gold because it was just literally absolutely amazing for us and it was the only thing that worked on my daughter. Now with this one, all you do is make sure you've got clean hands, pop a little bit on your finger and then rub it on the gum, wash your hands again, clean hands, pop a little bit on your finger and rub it at the top of the gums. And that one would last between two and four hours. So you can top it up kind of every two every two to four hours. But some of the others, like the Bongella, is you can top it up every uh, three or four hours. Others were every 20 minutes with the granules. So it just very much depends. You may also find that throughout the day with teething, you can in, get yourself involved and do lots of different activities with your little ones to try and distract them the majority of the time it does work so whether you're doing a rhythm and rhyme session whether you're doing a baby massage ses session or a baby yoga session that your little one is happy with whether you just decided to make a sensory box and your little one's engaging with it whether you've decided to go out on your daily walk um sometimes you know little things like that they can be well distracted in the day and those kind of teething liquids and gels you may just want to keep for night time and that is entirely up to you and I I mean Jade's obviously got a little one as well and I have as well and we both remember that sometimes you know, when they start teething it can be uh you know why is my baby crying am I doing something not right and it's all perfectly normal so just try out different things and it's important to remember when you're trying something out try it out more than on just one occasion because of course it's just kind of like a consistent thing uh, and if you were to take a pair of adults it, you know when you get to kind of three hour mark it, it wears off and it's the same with um, little ones so you just top them up throughout the day if you need it or top them up throughout the night can I just say as well with the Bongella yeah. um, there is obviously an adult one and a baby teething one um, so just make sure you buy the right one so you get the right one once I yeah. accidentally gave Martha the adult one realised afterwards panicked thinking oh my god I'm going to kill her rang like I can't remember if it was like a health visitor or something and it was like oh my god I'm, I've ruined my child I've given an adult one she's like it's fine oh. so many people do it just don't do it again so if you do do yeah. it it's yeah. fine but just bear that in mind when you buy them that there is an adult and a baby one yeah, definitely. And that is, of course, exactly the same as the paracetamol and the ibuprofen. You can, of course, give those to your children, but they have to be for children. And anything that you buy um, on the children's aisle, do check the measurements um, with the paracetamol and the ibuprofen, because based on different brands, they can differ. Um, I don't know if they differ now. We don't, I don't use it very often. Um, but we bought an ibuprofen and a paracetamol. One was from Tesco's and one was, sorry, ibuprofen from Tesco's and one was from Boots. And the measurements were different when my daughter was about six months old. So just always double check the packaging, how often you're supposed to give it to your child. Like Jace just said, make sure you get the adult one if you get in the Bongella. Uh, sorry, the child one <laughs> if you get in the Bongella. Um, and there is two different types of angelas there is definitely one for the children for the little ones for cooling the gums and there's one that actually helps to numb the gums so again it depends on um which route you want to go down and then there is also um the route where there is some individuals who are not keen on using pain relief and of course that is absolutely fine that is based on 
you know, you are the parent. So you choose how you want to deal with all of those. So I'm also going to talk to you about natural pain relief for children, okay? So um, I'll, Jade, if um, I have a site that I recommend my parents to, we're using amber beads. Am I okay to pop that in the comment later? Yeah, of course, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a British site. It's all, you know, um, legit and super safe and everything. Everything comes with a certificate. Um, so amber necklaces or amber beads, um, I, we used it. I didn't use it right at the start and I didn't even know anything about it. And one of my friends has suggested the amber necklace. Now I was a little bit worried in regards to the necklace because of course it's a necklace. It would be fine in the daytime as long as they're not alone sleeping. But when you go to nighttime, you have of course got to remove the necklace. And then usually at nighttime is when the teething pain, uh, because they're tired, um, then the teething pain, same, you, you kind of feel the pain a little bit more in the evening when you're tired and you know you've had a long day and everything so see the necklaces i never used because i wanted something that was going to be on her all the time so i bought a um, an amber anklet to put it on this one's ankle and that just stayed there all the time and that made a huge difference so how it works is basically the amber bees have got a natural pain relief property within the stone and as it rubs on your body it just slowly releases into your body and it helps with the pain so you can get all sorts you can get necklaces you can get an um, bracelets and you can get anklets for me personally i feel like an anklet is much safer because when they are tiny they're usually in baby grows or they don't kind of have access to their feet as much. That with a, a, a bracelet and with a necklace, it's much easier for them to put parts in their mouth. But what you choose is entirely up to you. Another thing is with um, baby. In the comment below, I'm going to. So when all this is over, I'm going to pop a video um, that has that discusses about baby massage purely on the foot. And this is based on reflexology. And this is to help with teething pain. So this is just a natural pain relief that you can do on your baby's hand and on your baby's foot if they're willing. You don't need oils for those either. And the more you do it like anything, it, it's just a natural pain relief. So in reflexology for, for babies, it basically touches on, on all those little pain receptors and that helps to block out the pain specifically within the jaw. So this will be something great for mums to do even now, as long as baby's six weeks and over, even if your little one isn't teething yet, it's something nice for you to do that'll help you to get into the swing of it for when the time comes. And it's a nice little bonding experience for you both to do at the same time. Sorry, I keep getting messages as well. So, um, the last thing really in regards to teething is comforting your baby. It is a really difficult time when you've had a baby, you are extremely tired. The majority of people, of course, don't have very much sleep. Babies are in now for not sleeping very well. With those that, us that have already got older children, mine's nearly three and a half now, but I do remember those times really well. So me and Dave definitely sympathise with you all. Yes. It's, yeah, we really do. So we're there to like answer any questions if you have questions about anything. But comforting your baby can be really hard. They do, they can, not all of them. My daughter was pretty good in the daytime, but she just cried a lot at night time and it can get quite hard. So my number one thing is, is if you have friends and family just speak to them on a regular basis, especially while we're in lockdown, because it, of course, it's um, we're not able to kind of go out and see them on a regular basis right now. So speak to them on a regular basis. If you have a partner and you just need five minutes to yourself because baby is teething and you're finding it all a little bit hard, there is absolutely nothing wrong in just saying, can you please just take baby a minute because I just need to just go and lie down for half an hour, an hour and have a little bit of time to myself. Um, the main 
before, if you are breastfeeding, I know that mine was um, feeding quite a lot. And it wasn't necessarily that she was having much more milk because obviously you can feel yourself and how full you are. It was more the fact that she was, of course, um, feeding for comfort. So she was more suckling, really. They just need a lot of cuddles, a lot of attention. And if you have a sling that is safe to put baby in and you are comfortable in wearing it, then I definitely would advise the TV and the TV to definitely get a sling on and just pop them in there while you're doing your cleaning, while you're having a walk around the garden, while you are doing the bed sheets or whatever it may be, because that closeness is what they want uh, most of the time. Um, how did you find it, Jade? Yeah, it was very difficult when she was, te- wait, well, she's still obviously teething now, and I know when a two's coming through because she doesn't sleep well, she's a pain, she's irritable, and I just know it's teething. You just, as you go along, you kind of learn the signs, don't you? But yeah, yeah. the sling really helped me because it was just comfort and I could still get on with my day. So yeah. going back to that, definitely. Yeah, I had a sling. I had two. I had one for going out. Obviously, at the moment, we can't really go out. But I had uh, the one that I used to wear at home was a fabric sling. And I managed to keep that until my daughter was probably about eight months old. I managed to keep her in that fabric sling. They are, you think that the fabric ones are not necessarily very good because they're fabric or it's going to loosen up quite easily. But they are fantastic. And I think I managed to do my housework with her in the sling. Otherwise, I'd get nothing but or eat. Mm. You know, I could at least make myself some toast because otherwise I could have gone like a whole day without any food. They're a lifesaver, um, aren't they? <laughs> and I think being a mum, it's not even necessarily the fact that they're just teething. I think it's just, it's, everything just changes, doesn't it? And you have to adapt to everything and all of it's quite hard. So comforting baby, make sure you are okay as well. It's not all about, you know, baby. You, you need to make sure you're okay because of course you are most probably the main caregiver for baby if not you are the main caregiver for baby so you've got to look after your mental health your emotional health at the same time and yourself psychologically and just make sure that you are okay if you need to comment in obviously the great group that jade has organized so many people have just commented it and it's such a great support group so talk to those if you have friends talk to your friends if you have family talk to your family there is no shame in saying, I'm just finding things a little bit hard right now. And hopefully you might be saying, oh, I'm finding things quite easy right now. So, you know, everyone's different and babies all see differently. Everything that they do, of course, is different. So um, some, like my daughter, was fantastic in the daytime. It was just the evening and the nighttime that she struggled. Uh, but in the daytime, we managed to just do lots of little different activities. So it's great, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. How the baby's teeth tend to appear, again, the majority of the time, they'll get uh, the bottom ones first, but then the top, and then the bottom ones, and then the top, and they go literally from bottom to top, bottom to top, bottom to top. However, they all differ. My daughter got the two bottom ones, she got the two top, then she got two top, then she got two bottoms, then she got two top. They're just all vary. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for teething. Um, there, was it, a, there was a few um, questions, but I think... Do you, have, do you have files in the group? Do I have what, sorry? Do you have a file in the group? Do you have a file, you know, in the group? Yeah, yeah. Because if, if, if it helps, I can send you the document and then you can, you can post in the file and at a later yeah, sorry, you really, you really broke up then. I don't know if that was oh. just for me, but I I think I got what you said about posting the file in the group. So, yeah, that's fine. We can do that when the class yeah. ends. Yeah, and then people can just access it as and when yeah, and it the, suits the, them as well. There is a few questions. I think you've pretty much covered them oh, in yeah. what you've said. Um, but Alison yeah. said, can the top teeth come first? Um, I think you've just answered that. But um, I think our little boy, I think he's yeah. only about six weeks, and she's showing si- um, he's showing signs at the top. Like white bits, and I think yeah, yeah. The, like literally, babies can absolutely start teething at any point. Um, one of the ladies who attended my classes quite a while ago now, her her little one was born with the two top teeth. Nothing at the bottom, just the two top teeth. And my friend's little one had his first bottom teeth at ten weeks old. So they can literally, yeah, come at any point. Yeah. Martha got a vampire teeth first. <laughs> she looks oh, did she? <laughs>
so cute! Two bottom ones came through, like I could see them poking through, and then all of a sudden these vampire teeth just grew oh, before oh. any of us. So Did she just look the cutest? <laughs> yeah, it was very strange. Have you, still, have you got pictures? I have somewhere, yeah. Oh would, my goodness, that's so cute. I'll, to, I'll post it on the thread <laughs> if I find it. Oh, that's so lovely! Yeah. Sam has, sorry, can yes. I just ask one more question? No, sorry. Um, sorry, Jane. When they're teething, do they have days where it's bad and then days that are calmer? That's how it feels with my little one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So some days you will just think to yourself, oh, what, what are we going to do? And then other days you just think, oh, well, today was just amazing. And I think it, those days are just brilliant because when things kind of calm down, all of a sudden you can almost kind of like recharge yourself, ready for the bad days. But the majority of the time, at that time, when they are teething, sometimes it can very much feel like you've got more bad days than good days. But when the teething moves forward, you kind of reflect and you actually think, actually, we had like five good days last week and we only really had, over the kind of week, a few grumbly bits here and there and it was majority of the time towards the evening. So I'm going to pop those files about teething and weaning with Jade so she can post them up. And I'm also going to um, write lots of information about things that you can do. If we've got time before the end, we'll just discuss that as well. And it's related to teething um, as well as anything else. And it's about um, what you can do within the household to kind of keep um, things nice and calm in the evening, which can kind of sometimes reduce witching hour which the majority of you may well do. And sometimes there's things that you think, oh God, I didn't even think about that. So we'll discuss those bits later. Is, is there any more questions? Um, no, the, the, Stacey, was that a question or were you just um, telling us? She just put, my daughter is great during the night, it's just a day. She tends to put her fist in her mouth and gum it. She's dribbling loads. So that does sound like teething, if that was the question. Yeah. Yeah, so that does sound like tea then. Also, um, the hands in the mouth, sometimes as well, it's also part of self-soothing, so it'll be a mixture. So keeping, letting them having their hands in their mouth is quite important because it's a really important emotional response to keeping themselves calm and keeping themselves feeling safe and secure where they are. So if they do put their hands in their mouth, whichever, um, or the feet or the thumbs it is kind of important to just let them do that because it is them just keeping themselves nice and calm um, and it's an important thing for them to learn okay so we'll move on to the weaning so with the weaning when they start weaning the advised age is from six months onwards and the reason why that is, is based on their digestive system. So making sure that the digestive system is mature enough in order to then deal with food. If um, you have issues with your baby um, consuming formula or breast milk, you would of course have spoken to your GP or your health visitor. So if they're like very refluxy, or if they're bringing milk off on a regular basis, or if they are gaining weight incredibly slowly, you will be guided by either the GP, the health center, and usually followed by a dietitian. And at that point, they will say, right, well, we can start weaning much earlier in order for your little one to kind of progress more. Okay. Um, but uh, that's only 20% of babies that tend to have issues with breast milk, formula, um, who struggle to gain weight. Uh, so that's one important thing to remember. I can just hear my daughter crying in the back and if you can. Don't worry. It's more realistic. Missing mummy. Oh. <laughs> um, so with weaning, we advise from six months onwards for that purpose. And it's just to ensure that their digestive system is well developed to of course deal with food that you're going to give them. If you want to start slightly earlier, then that is, um, you know, like down to you and you understanding your baby and um, feeling as though your baby is ready. So we're going to go through all of those in a second, okay? 
when you first start cleaning, you will notice it. A lot of people say to me, you're not going to know whether they is ready or not. So, first one is, usually wait until six months. Second is you will notice because when you are eating food, they are just, their eyes are just on you. Like, they just give me your food. They just want to eat what you've got in your hands. Um, you will just notice, and often they think that they are eating, so they'll just be like, um... So as soon as you're eating a mouthful, they'll just copy you. And the whole thing is based on copying what you are doing. So that's how they learn. So they will learn by you picking up the food and putting it in their mouth. And they're just watching you all the time about, oh, how is she chewing or how is he chewing? And that's literally how they learn. So it's quite amazing on how such tiny little humans just develop so quickly and learn so much. It's just amazing. When you are feeling that um, baby is ready, so kind of roughly about six months, you can start introducing certain foods. So when you will know that they're ready is that they will stay sitting in position and they are able to hold their head up. If they are not able to fully hold their head up for you know at least 45 minutes, you know full well that they're not ready. And the reason why that's important is because of course the food goes down here. You don't want any food to kind of get blocked in there if they've got their head, you know, their head still a bit wobbly. So that's one of the things. You'll notice that they are coordinating with their eyes, their hands and their mouth together. So they will start to pick things up and putting it in their mouth and looking like they just want to eat food. And that's, of course, a sign. Another sign is when if they are um, breastfeeding, um, drinking milk or having water, you'll notice that after they are still very interested in wanting more. So that's often a sign as well, that what they are consuming, if it's milk, then they are not, they're not fully satisfied. Um, so for example, if it's formula, usually formula is every four hours. So after, you know, they've kind of had their eight ounces and they were almost approaching six months and they are, you know, one and a half hours in, very hungry then you're noticing that at that point they are going to be starting to get ready for needing a little bit more. when you are starting weaning the really important thing to remember is don't get stressed over it just keep calm relax you can make your own food if you want to and we're going to go through lots of things right now and i'm in files that i'll give to jade there is going to be lots of little recipes for you to start off okay and you'll have everything that we've just talked about today on paper so if you want to print it off you can and keep it for a later date um with the with I just forgot what i was talking about that with the milk <laughs> with the milk whether it's breast milk or formula um when you're starting weaning it's really important to remember that when they start they are only eating a tiny minute amount of food and they are still going to need the same amount of milk or breast milk as before because the majority of their protein, fats, and the rest of the vitamins and minerals are going to call, come solely from that milk. What you are giving them um, as food, as extra, is literally just preparing them to kind of start to go on to semi-solid foods and onwards. So you've just given them a taste. Their diet should still be, the main diet should still be milk or formula, whether it's breast milk or formula, okay? With giving them food, the important thing to remember is they're going to also have their milk, they're going to have some food, and now at that point when you're starting weaning, they are going to need water. So that water, if it's before six months, needs to be uh, distilled. If it's after six months, the new guidelines is to say that it doesn't need to be. Uh, we kept doing hours until one, um, for you know, how you want to do it is entirely up to you. But before six months, we tend to say, oh, boil the water, leave it aside, cool it, keep it in the fridge uh, for kind of 24 hours and then restart again. So you don't need to boil a lot. With how much water they need to consume, we want them to have enough water because it's a liquid. So milk is also a food. And then you want them to have the liquid to kind of flush down the food to help with their digestive system so they can poo 
correctly and properly on a regular basis. So they need enough water to do that. How much water will depend on how much food. So we started off with about two ounces a day, and then you, you kind of build that slowly up. And it's the same as this. Some days we drink more water than others, and it's the same with babies. Some days they're going to be more thirsty than others, but it's important to offer them um, the liquid because it's just going to help um, you know, flush everything down in. It's also going to help in case they might get a bit of a dry mouth, they need something to kind of, you know, pull down a little bit. Sorry, Sam, you know, so, sorry, just to interrupt you, with the water, and I've seen this a lot in lots of mum groups, would you recommend having it in their normal milk bottle or like a oh, sippy cup or? So um, with the water, we use a sippy cup um, because I breastfed. So my daughter wouldn't have had a clue how to drink from a, a baby bottle. So we just used a sippy cup, which was advised by Charnwood Bras um, when we did our, our course with um, breast milk transitioning to, you know, later on from weaning. Um, a lot of my mums who are bottle feeding are using um, sippy cup in the daytime. And at night time, when they're going to bed and they're trying to reduce the nighttime feeds kind of nine months onwards, are using um, the baby bottle and filling that with water at night time. So I think it just depends up to the mums of um, what you would like. There are so many cups out there as well. Um, the munchkin ones are fantastic. The 360, um, you can turn them upside down, they don't drip or anything like that. They are brilliant. They are soft and silicone around the inside, which comes off. And it's great if your little ones have got teeth because it's soft on both sides. So it's not going to cause any damage to the teeth. So they can just pick it up, drink it, or you can help them to put it in their mouth and they can obviously suck on it to get the water. Most sippy cups now have got soft silicone around the top to help to protect their teeth or protect the gums. So they are a great thing to use. And if you just want to use your baby bottle, then I can't say anything wrong with that and um, nobody's ever mentioned that that would be an issue so yeah I would, I would say you can do both really I think it's all trial and error isn't it seeing what works oh, for you and your baby and yeah and you and you giving your baby water in a baby bottle they may be very happy about it and like you just say looking at you thinking hold on a minute I normally have milk in this what's yeah. going on here so it may be whether you want to differentiate the difference between um you're going to have water in this so when you get this cup against your mouth you know full well what's coming or whether you want to keep it separate or whether you want to keep it the same it's yeah entirely up to everybody really i use them all with martha but i will just say with the silicon ones i didn't realize that that um silicon bit like popped out at the top so if anyone gets them just make sure you actually pop it out and wash it because otherwise it goes moldy very quickly and you're essentially yeah. giving your baby mold to drink so just bear that in mind because I didn't realise it first. No, neither did I straight away until I'm sure I filled it up with water and I smelt it and I thought, what is this? Obviously, I kind of got rid of that one and then bought a new one. But yeah, they do pop off. You do have to get your thumb quite far in um, to, to the middle and then you can pop it off. But yeah, they are, they are really good. And my daughter's nearly three and a half now and we've had ours literally since she was about five months old mm -hmm. so they do absolutely last we've had uh, we've only got three city cups and we've still got the same three city cups so when she's kind of feeling a little bit you know under the weather that's kind of like her with milk because it's a comfort thing mm -hmm. so they do last they are amazing oh yeah um, there is just one more question, if it's okay, before you move on to the next topic. Yeah. Um, Stacey's asked, my daughter was £10, five ounce born. My health visitor said to start at four months. Should I wait until she's six months? She has seven ounce every three hours at the minute. If, if, her, if your health visitor has suggested you start early, then they are a medical professional. And I would say follow their advice if you are happy to. Because at the same time, you are, of course, the, the parent. Um that was probably a slightly larger baby than average therefore you will notice that of course they are going to require more food it's the same as if a child is three but is in age five to six clothes and a child is three but is in age two to four clothes the child that is obviously wearing bigger clothes especially if they're tall is going to require 
more food because they are growing at a faster rate, therefore they have a quicker metabolism. So if your health visitor has suggested that, I would certainly say so to just what they've suggested. If you're happy to do that, um, we're going to go through quite a lot of other things as well right now. Um, like, I will be honest, and I'm not going to say that I waited until six months because I didn't, um, but I had gone on quite a few courses and me and my husband had made the decision together that we were going to wean our daughter slightly earlier. And let me just tell you the reasons why I did so. So when you wean your child, it is, of course, entirely up to you as to when you wean your child. I knew I was fully aware of the reasons why I needed to wait until six months because of her digestive system. Also, there is uh, so many allergies in our families on both sides. Therefore, we were going to need to therefore be careful and below the age of six months, if you're starting to introduce those foods and you've got allergies on both sides of the family, then potentially those allergies, your, the digestive system is not ready to deal with anything like that. Therefore, they could end up with those allergies. So you kind of have to avoid those foods. So we started early because my daughter at four months did not sleep at all. I didn't wean at four months, but from four months until five months, my daughter was not sleeping at all. I was really struggling mentally um, and physically tired. My husband was working ridiculous hours. And when she got to, when we got to kind of like five months and a week, I just said to my husband, we're gonna have to because she's just not sleeping. And I was breastfeeding and um when i was when i was expressing my milk was very quite thin so i had gone to the doctors and said is this okay and he said well it should be fine because you know most people should be able to breastfeed your milk looks normal so we started to wean a little bit earlier by three weeks and still consuming the same amount of milk i made sure and i only started with a, a nice puree, but we'll go into the sizes in a minute and that did help um but you know everybody's different so you think if you know the science behind it and you know the reasons why you then know your baby and then you can make a decision as to how and when you start because all of us that jade has organized that we talks about we all know our stuff but it's also really important to remember that you are a parent and you know your baby and you have to follow your instinct. And if your instinct is saying, my baby is feeding every two to three hours and she seems really quite hungry and quite unsettled and your health visitor suggested it, um, you know, more than one person that will happen to, then of course, definitely just follow your instinct. You know best, your parents. And the NHS, they do um, at about 12 weeks, I think, send a letter out, don't they? To, and you go, at, you actually go to your local weaning class when the baby's about 16 weeks. I don't know what they're doing at the minute. I don't know if you know yes. that. So at the moment, what's happening is if you, it depends on what area you're in. So where I live, there's nothing at the moment um, because we're kind of in the middle of Castle Donington and look for a catchment area. So there's nothing. However, if you're in a slightly bigger city or a bigger village next to a catchment area, they should send you a pack instead of obviously going to a face-to-face. -face. So when my daughter was 12 weeks, I got one inviting me for when she was six months. But because obviously we started weaning a little bit earlier, I didn't go. Um, but usually when you, they're doing them earlier now. So usually, like just Jade said, usually between um, 10 and 14 weeks, you'll get when your baby's 10 to 14, 14 weeks, you should get a letter at some point that time and it would normally invite you to a face-to-face -face meeting about weaning when to start basically discussing similar things to what i've just discussed and giving you a list of websites that you can go to that are of course you know um approved medically um within the uk um so but at the moment most sure start centers are sending out um packs they're quite short and sweet packs um i'll see if i can get hold of one and then i can pop it on there as well and scan it and then you can put it in your file mm -hmm. i should be able to get hold of one for my midwife brilliant but yeah to be honest i've learned more from you even though i don't need to know at the minute from you yeah. than i did at that class i found it a bit pointless to be honest i don't know if it's helped anyone else with a previous child but i, I came away yeah. with 
feeling more confused if anything so yeah well I didn't go to it because I'd started doing some training in order to teach it but also because we started weaning a little bit earlier and I, I by the time I got my letter inviting me six months well, I'm, I'm, I'm six months and a week and something I thought well we've started so long ago so I didn't I thought well I'd be better off giving the place to somebody else to be fair um but yeah so it's just knowing the signs of when your baby's ready which we've talked about what you want to start with so one important thing is is to this is probably going to sound really silly or it might not is to find out any allergies on both sides of your family if you are able to so if you are able to definitely ask you know immediate family do we have any allergies in um in our families because if you do have allergies in either of your families then it's important to ensure that you do not include that food, um, that you don't give that, that food to your baby straight away. So you would work with other things first. So we had no idea that we had enough allergies in both sides of our family. And my daughter um, has a severe nut allergy. So it's really important to just not include those foods if you have allergies to them, whether it's your partner or just immediate family. If you have allergies, um, definitely at a later date, you know, when all of this is over or just don't introduce the food into their diet, but when this is sorted or if you are worried about it, definitely go speak to your GP on the phone or your health visitor on the phone and say, by the way, we have um, severe fish allergy in our family, we have a nut allergy, we have a dairy allergy in our family, and they will guide you on what to do. So if um, they will tell you basically how to introduce that food into your diet, um, you know, so tiny, minute amount. I'm not going to go into it because I would prefer individuals, if you have um, an allergy, to not include those foods in because, of course, it could be dangerous. So definitely seek medical professionals for that, okay? So when you are, when baby is roughly around um, six months of age, you can start introducing all sorts of food basically when you're weaning now we always say to start first with your bitter vegetables so kind of like your broccoli your cauliflower your cabbages your spinach and things like that it's really important to vary the diet but of course start with those bits um starting so what you what i would advise to do is buying ice cream trays Ice cube trays are going to become your best friend when you're starting weaning. You can batch cook things. You can mix your cauliflower, broccoli, and spinach if you want to, or you can keep them separate. Blend it all up into a really nice soft puree that has the consistency of runny custard is what I would suggest to start with. So nice runny custard consistency. Plop it in all of your little ice cube trays. Cover it up and freeze them. When you're starting weaning, your little one will only require one spoon of food, which is basically one teaspoon of food, which is basically half an ice cream tray. So they will literally only have one spoon at a time. And then as the days progress, they'll just require a little bit more as it goes on. So on day five, they might require two ice cream trays. And then by day 10, they might only require, or by day 15, they might only require three. And then they will stick to that for quite some time. So when you're weaning, it's a very small bit by bit stage that you are doing food wise, because of course they are still consuming milk, uh, whether it's breast milk or formula. And their digestive system, their digestive system is getting used to um, dealing with the food and therefore, of course, getting rid of the food so it's important to start off small um with everything things that other things that they advise you to start with are with your tubers so you could think like your potatoes and then other things you can have carrots apples and pears and you can also mix your fruit with your veg um which makes it nice and sweet don't panic if your little of the spits it right back out at you because they might do it usually takes on average about 10 goes, so literally 10 goes of the same food before they can like something. So if one day they don't like it, 
try it a different day. Don't throw the whole batch away that you've made and think, well, that was a waste. They will eat it at some point, just right now is not the time. So don't worry about it. Try it on a different day. Another thing to remember is if you can, it is possible, try and eat at the same time as your baby, if that is possible, because they are learning everything on how to eat from you. So even if you're putting out, um, you know, purees and you're feeding them a puree, uh, try and eat some food at the same time because then they can see your mouth actions and how you are eating and the fact that you're picking up your fork or you're messing with your knife and they're going to want to feed themselves at the same time. So things like that are fantastic. Um, there are quite a few foods that um, they advise to kind of leave until baby is one and over, and that is things like soya. So soya, um, oat milk, um, almond milk, um, shellfish, and things like that. So you can have you can find the list actually of what to avoid all on the NHS website. It is fantastic with key information. So do have a look at that. So that's all from six months. So six months to seven months, they will require just the most minute amount of food, okay? But again, all babies are different, same as an adult. Some babies are more hungry than others. So just follow your instinct and go with baby. But when you are starting out that first couple of weeks, just keep it small because their, um, their stomach will still remain quite small. So you don't want to overfill them. Okay, when they get to seven to nine months, by that point, they should be on three small meals a day. So as well as all that formula and all that breast milk. So three small meals a day will be one tiny little bit of breakfast, whether that's um, baby porridge or baby rice. Um, you know, so you're literally giving them maybe three teaspoons for breakfast at the absolute most. Lunch time, they could have um, some broccoli, cauliflower, whatever else it is. You don't necessarily need to introduce meat at that point, but you can do if you want to. Just make sure they consume lots of dark green vegetables for the iron and the calcium. That's really important. And just try and vary the colours, same as what we do. It's really important for us to kind of eat all the colours of the rainbow, just to ensure that we get all the vitamins and minerals. And it's exactly the same for the little ones. If you are worried about your little consuming the right amount of food, you and you know, a mixed diet, you can buy liquid vitamin. So you can buy it from most places, I would I would guess. We used to buy ours from Holland and Barrett's just because my daughter used to clearly like it. It was clearly very tasty. And it's just like a, a Calpol syringe. And every day I would give her the correct amount for her as an extra vitamin and mineral boost. Uh, because my daughter stopped, well, my daughter stopped feeding from me at about 10 months and she did not drink any milk at all until she turned about 19 months not so we we topped up with vitamins and minerals um but that's entirely up to you what you do so between seven and nine months try and vary the diet as best as you can and just remember that it takes up to 10 times before trying something before they might actually like it so just keep going at that point at seven to nine months they may not have any teeth but they have had a month or two to kind of get used on how to eat and you will notice that how they consume food very much differs so right at the start they don't seem to know what to do with their tongue as they start to get used to um eating and mimicking the chewing then you will notice that their tongue sits further back and they are eating more correctly so at that point you can increase you can make the texture of the food a little bit thicker so it's kind of a little bit more on, um, I don't think what texture really, like mashed avocado. You can kind of make it like mashed avocado by nine months. So it's a, a much thicker consistency. And just make sure they've got water there as well. When they get to kind of 10 to 12 months, they'll be on three meals a day. And the consistency will just be potentially a little bit mushy especially if it's meat so if it's minced meat it's fine but if it's anything else it needs to be chopped nice and small if it's flaky fish that's brilliant so by that point you can introduce meat into their diet um white fish is great from 
kind of seven months onwards, really, same as salmon. So if you can introduce them to strong flavours from the get-go, it really does help um, to create a less fussy eater as such. But again, it all, de- it all depends. When you usually get to a toddler age, kind of age onwards, it can just be a little bit fussy for a while, so don't worry about it. Um, with 10 to 12 months onwards, you can give them raisins from one, one it says. Um, if they've got quite a few teeth, then they'll be able to chew them from probably about 11 months. It's just making sure that they're only having one at a time, that they're chewing properly, and then it's gone. Um, they can have a decent breakfast, whether that's wheat a bit, whether you want to give them scrambled eggs, whether you want to give them porridge, whether you want to give them eggy bread, some toast, whatever it may be. Lunch time, they'll have a normal lunch, maybe an afternoon snack and then a dinner and potentially a pudding. So at that point, you'll notice when they're kind of on the verge to hitting one, their diet has increased quite drastically with the amount that they are eating, or almost eating the same as what we would be, not in consistency wise, but the fact that we are eating a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner and a snack throughout the day. So it is important to top their sugar levels up basically. Now, um, Something that's important to know is baby led weaning. So the majority of individuals often choose pureed food because they can control how much the baby gets in um, as best as possible and they know how much they're eating. Baby led weaning, if anybody doesn't know what baby led weaning is, is you are cooking the food, so you are slightly overcooking your broccoli, you're slightly overcooking your vegetables basically so that it kind of, you can pick them up they can pop them in their mouth when it's cooled down, of course, and they basically eat it themselves. They are their own, picking it up and putting it in their mouth. You are not feeding your child, and that is what baby leg weaning is. Baby leg weaning works for some, doesn't work for others. It's entirely up to you. Some parents do a little bit of baby leg weaning, and other parents do a, a mixture between baby leg and pure age food. And it's just finding something that works for, for both of you, really. Um, you can still give them a spoon. You can still pop it on a plate if you want to, and then they can just get on with it. So it gives them quite a lot of independence as well. So um, individuals who are quite uh, into Montessori nurseries or Montessori way, which is kind of giving your, your child the independence from a very early age, then that is a great way to start with baby led weaning. And, and again, in the files, I'll get all of that uploaded with Jade, and you'll be able to there's lots of information on baby led weaning and um, how to go about it okay so you'll start off in exactly the same way um, with your tiny amount of broccoli if you want to it's just overcooked so it's really soft with um when is a good time to give baby food when you first start in weaning that again is entirely up to you so if you are noticing that they are struggling to get to sleep after that milk maybe giving them um something carby kind of in the evening might be quite a good thing to do. So for example, mixing broccoli and a little bit of potato or sweet potato together kind of fill their tummies up a little bit more and giving them a spoon or so before they go to bed and then their bottle might help to settle them a bit. Sometimes it works better in the morning uh, or in the afternoon. It just kind of depends on your your routine and it is very much um, based on your day and what works for both of you really. With fussy eaters, my daughter is a fussy eater. She never used to, but she currently is a fussy eater. So um, like we discussed earlier on, don't worry, it can take them up to 10 tries per thing in order for them to start liking it. So just keep going with it, keep giving it to them, and eventually it will, they will, they will enjoy it over time. When they do get a little bit bigger, it's more about kind of like control and what they can have and can't have. Um, so that kind of is a little bit. Suggestions on what you might need in order to start weaning. So something that is advised is um, a high chair. What you choose to put your little one is entirely up to you. You will find that certain high chairs are better than others just because they're more supportive around the back and the sides so babies can kind of lean back and they don't have to work so hard on keeping their core up and sitting properly by themselves while they're being fed so you know 
with high chairs, the possibilities are endless, but really find something that um, you like the look of, that you think will support baby and so on. With spoons, the best thing to start with is silicone spoons because they are tiny. They almost look like little dolly spoons. They've got the tiniest amount of silicone. So just they're gone. They already have teeth. It won't damage their teeth. So definitely start with something rubber or plastic like that because it's going to be nicer on their gums. Plastic bowls, or you can buy all sorts of beautiful bamboo bowls. I think, Jade, you've got some bamboo bowls. I you? did, but they break very easily. So if you've, oh, got, no. if you've got a baby that likes to throw the food when they're done, like Martha does, we've gone through so many and they're not cheap either. So oh, gosh, no. We just use so maybe plastic. a plastic bowl might be the best idea then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we never had uh, the bamboo ones because as my as we'd finished weeding and we were on top of me, like, all of these things were just starting to come out. Um, so yeah, so we never had any. Um, ice cube trays, definitely buy some ice cube trays, especially when you're starting off or even when they're eight, nine months old, because you'll be able to put everything in uh, little containers and if they're frozen, you know, when all of this lockdown is over, you'll be able to pop them in a container and then you'll be able to literally go on your walk and by the time you finish your walk, the food will have been defrosted. So it's a fab thing to do, especially if it's fruit or veg. Uh, bibs, we're going to need a lot of bibs. They do make a lot of mess. My daughter, I, I used to have to bath my daughter after feeding time because she used to just be covered. Um, I used to literally pop my daughter down on the floor in the kitchen with a big rug, pop her down in the middle, pop lots of different bowls around with spoons. So I did a mixture of pureed and uh, baby led weaning, and then she just fed herself. When she was done, I had no involvement in it. I just left, I was obviously there. It's really important to make sure you are there when your baby is eating. Never let your baby be unattended when you're eating, risk of choking, choking hazard. So I used to sit near her and talk to her about what she was eating and what she was doing. She had a great time and then it was bath time. With the bibs um, as well, sorry. Sorry. Um, I don't know if you've seen on my Facebook, Sam, but the bib I use for Martha, it, I think it's pronounced Bibadoo or Bibadoo. Oh, right, yeah. I don't know if anyone's heard of them. I'll put a no, link really. in as well. They're brilliant. They're quite pricey, and I was a bit reluctant at first, but they're amazing. They literally come up to the neck, they wear them, and it grips oh, onto the yes. water, and it catches yes. everything. It's literally mess-free. You only Yeah, I have seen them. those, actually. Yeah. They're about yeah, like they do look amazing yeah they're great honestly it saves so yeah. much cleaning up it's definitely worth the money so i will post a link for those as well to people oh yeah that sounds amazing so we're on the last bit ladies thank you so much for patient i have i have got quite a lot of information so we've got about preparing food safely so right now is probably even more important to do so so make sure that you wash your hands you're washing your fruit and vegetables everything must be washed um washed prior okay so your apples need to be washed make sure you peel your apples the baby's digestive system is not going to be able to cope with the peel and it's going to be just too much for them as well as they wouldn't be able to chew it um when you are starting weaning make sure you are cooking your fruit so cook your apple your banana you don't need to cook but anything else we advise to cook uh, so like your apples, your pears, and then you can pop them into a puree, shove them into a little ice cube tray and freeze them until you need it. They're fantastic. Um, eggs, make sure that they are, um, oh God, I can't think what the word is now. That they are basically pasteurized. So make sure that the eggs have either got the red line stamp or that they are, you know, that they've been looked after well. Um, if you are giving your child eggs, make sure that the egg yolk is fully cooked. So it needs to be a hard boiled, hard boiled egg, egg, egg un until they are kind of one year. One year. Oh, you're just breaking up, Sam. You're frozen and you sound robotic. There you go. We're, we're oh, yay. I thought it's gone then. Okay, so we've got, um, yeah, so that's basically it. Just make sure you're cook, cooking things properly. If it's salmon, it must be cooked properly. If it's things, it needs to be cooked properly. None of it is lightly cooked because it needs to be thoroughly cooked. Prawns, when they are produced, though, thoroughly cooked. Drinks, 
keep it to water if you can and milk out try and avoid as as possible while they're getting their teeth and while they've got their baby teeth especially especially early on because you want to try and try and preserve the adult teeth as best as possible vegan and in diet is exactly the same meaning with non-vegetarian vegans okay as non-vegetarian non-vegan you do exactly the same and if you are a vegan and vegetarian you don't necessarily and you want to make sure your baby stays the same that's fine there's nothing wrong in having a baby that is vegetarian or vegan as long as the food group is altered enough and varied enough to give your baby the sufficient nutrients if that's what you want to do then of course that is what you can do just remember they cannot have soya almond oat milk rice milk until they reach the age of one and then lastly, it's just about vitamins and minerals. If you, if your baby consumes a good amount of milk every day and, um, you know, a good diet from all the colors of the rainbow, your vitamins and supplements, you shouldn't need it, but there's nothing wrong in giving it to them. That's going to be kind of, you know, no problem there. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I can't finish. I'm really sorry that I talk so much. <laughs> no, it's I hope it's been useful. Um, there is a few questions. Um, Stacey yep. said, I've bought the Ella's kitchen pouches. Are these okay to use? And Sam oh, asked, yes, of course. Um, can you make baby porridge with breast milk? Oh, yes, definitely. So um, the Ella's kitchen pouches are fantastic. Um, yeah, you can buy all sorts. And we used to buy lots of those for convenience, especially when we went out. But I used to try my best to make things as best as possible. But, you know, we try and be a superwoman but it's not possible to do it all the time. So yeah, there's nothing wrong in buying jars and buying packets of what you can buy in supermarkets. Go ahead and do it, that's absolutely fine. Um, sorry, what else did you say, Jade? Can you make porridge with breast milk? Oh yes, you can, absolutely, yeah. Um, so you can um, add a little bit of boiling water to it first, or you can obviously make it in a pan, adding a little bit of uh, your breast milk into it and just heating it gently. Just don't don't boil breast milk. So it's got to be heated very gently and you wouldn't do it for very long. So on a low heat until it's warm and then that's it. You don't want to boil breast milk. Brilliant, thank you. Um, no more questions yeah. have come in. So if anybody that's else bad. has got any, please just pop them in the comments. Sam's in the group, she'll be happy to answer um, if you're watching later on yeah. or whatever. So yeah, it's been really informative. Um, oh, good. It's a lot more than I learned before. It was oh, I hope it's turn, not been so. too much. I know we've kind of been a little bit, so I do realize. No, I think it's great. It's good to okay. give all this information. Um, oh, someone's just asked, what do you think to the baby ice lolly holders? Oh, well, I think they're fab as long as you're there with your baby. Because what you can do as well, so I, my daughter, from when she reached ten and a half, stopped breastfeeding overnight, and it was her decision. And she would not have formula, she would not have milk of any sort. So the only way I could get milk into her was to literally pump and I made ice garlic with her breast milk. So you can do that. You can't do it with formula, but you can of course make fruit lollies, just blend the fruit and sieve it if you want to, so it's not got all the little um, seeds in there. Yeah, you can make all sorts. Bananas um, was a firm favourite. So lots of different fruit, fruits blended together with breast milk or the milk you use or just water and then just freeze it. Yeah, they're a great idea. And it's good for teething as well, isn't it? So. Oh, yeah, massively. Yeah, definitely. Just make sure, though, when you are anything that is out of the freezer, you're leaving it to thaw out for, you know, five or ten minutes a little bit just so that it's not straight out of the freezer because if you don't yet have any tea, the ice lolly will stick to their gums. Yeah. So it is important to just leave it out for a little bit, just so it's not, you know, so it's not all white and um, frosty on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only thing. Do you know what? I'm learning so much from you thinking, I did this wrong, I did that wrong. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I don't mean to say <laughs> No, no, it's fine. It, it, no, there's no right or wrong way of doing <laughs> things. It's just, it, to be honest, it's things that I learned as well my way, like from doing it yeah. and also from um, going on, on, the, on the courses to be able to teach all of this stuff. Because I used to give my daughter frozen carrot sticks 
And once I remember her crying after it, nothing entered my mind at all until I went on to this course. And she was like, when you give them frozen things, just leave it for a little while because it can stick to their gums. And I thought, my daughter cried then. <laughs> but, but that's yeah. the thing, it's all, like we've said constantly, you you trial learn. and error and you learn from your mistakes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know, as long as you're not doing anything drastic, you, you can't put your baby in too much danger, can you? No, absolutely not. And 15 years ago, things were so different with you know, weaning and our parents did things different with her. So, you know, yeah. Exactly. Just learn yourself as you go yeah. along. This is all just advice. Uh, take it or leave it. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much for all Thank the Thank you so much, Dave. Um, I think it's helped a lot of people. They've stayed till the end, so that's a good sign. <laughs> oh, God. Brilliant. Thank so, you so much for listening. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, uh, Sam is back on, is it Tuesday? I've really Tuesday. Um, 1.30, I think it is. Yeah, uh, baby development, talking about, yeah. is it like baby massage, signing, rhythm and dance, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, on Tuesday again um, but yeah. yeah we will have one tomorrow as well but um, that's not with Sam <laughs> um, lovely. so thank you everyone bye thank you bye everybody bye